All right, so today we'll be presenting on the Tata Starbucks partnership uh, case. A uh, small background or synopsis of the case is that Tata partnered with Starbucks, um, actually Starbucks partnered with Tata to be able to enter the Indian market. Um, Starbucks used uh, Tata's experience and, and size to, uh, to enter the market. This presentation will talk about uh, where there's some shortcomings in their strategy currently and how we think that they can implement some changes to, uh, to return the partnership to profitability and really move the business forward in the uh, country of India. So we'll start with the five forces model. Um, really there's three out of the five that we saw that there was a, uh, an above uh, average risk level. Um, so the first is potential entrance. We rated this at a medium risk. Um, one, because there are extremely high real estate costs in India. Uh, as well as a sit-in culture. So 80% of the business that's in India is done um, through social gatherings at the store itself where customers will stay for uh, hours on end um, socializing. Uh, where there's a lower risk, uh, excuse me, a higher risk for potential entrance is the fact that coffee is almost a commodity product uh, so that uh, competitors can easily enter that market um, without a whole lot of costs into R&D. Um, so the real estate costs and the commodity uh, balance out to give us a medium risk for potential entrance. Uh, the second thing is industry competition, which we rated as a high risk. Um, so coffee in India is extremely competitive. There are a magnitude of both domestic and foreign competitors. Um, most competitors compete on a cost differentiation model because of, uh, excuse me, a cost leadership model, uh, because the incomes in India are lower um, than a lot of the more developed countries, and also the population ex is skewed to a younger age range between 18 and 24 years of age. Um, so industry competition is extremely uh, high in India. Uh, the last thing that we deemed a high risk was the risk of substitutes. So India is traditionally a tea drinking culture. Um, Starbucks has had a lot of success in both China and Japan, um, but one thing that is different there between uh, them and India is the fact that both China and Japan have been more exposed to coffee than India has, uh, especially in India's northern provinces. Um, not a whole lot of exposure to coffee, so there's a, a, a hurdle to overcome there as far as persuading customers um, to, to leave the substitutes as far as tea and other coffee um, options behind in terms of Starbucks. And we believe that Starbucks is gonna have to focus on the differentiation to be able to achieve this. So moving into the Diamond D model now. Um, so currently with Starbucks strategy in India, uh, we think there's some broken links between the different factors of the Diamond D model. Um, first is strategy. So currently they're employing a cost leadership model and trying to compete with the, uh, the Cafe Coffee Days, which Gavin will touch on next, as well as other competitors in the industry. Um, and then also resources. Uh, Starbucks is really struggling to be able to turn a profit because they spend up to 25% of their total revenues on real estate costs. Uh, so we believe that this does not match, this along with the cost leadership strategy does not match uh, Starbucks corporate culture uh, and is causing the Diamond D model to have broken links um, and further on in the presentation we'll go into what they can do to correct this um, and how these two models tie into each other. Thanks Grant. Now we're going to go into the competitive analysis. Uh, we're going to focus on differentiation as well as cost leadership. Uh, as Grant has already talked about the, the uh, competitive nature or the competitive landscape in the coffee space in India is is very, very competitive. Um, initially, Starbucks would come in and try to expand very rapidly and get multiple stores open uh, very quickly. Um, as we look over here at our matrix uh, for cost leadership and differentiation, we see that Dunkin' Donuts and McDonald's is already in that space. Uh, they sell for about 20% less per cup of coffee than the co Cafe Coffee Day or Starbucks. Uh, they are already built out as well, so they do not have the real estate uh, the, the real estate currently exists, so their uh, infrastructure is set up. 
Uh, coming a little fur further to the differentiation side, we have domestic coffee shops that are located in neighborhoods, um, one or two shops. These individuals uh, obviously are, are differentiation in terms of they probably know the people better. They're not a they're not a large chain. Uh, Cafe Coffee Day is is the uh, big player in the India space. Uh, they currently have 1,500 locations. Operate very much like Starbucks does in the U.S. Um, they are affiliated with a coffee trading company, so they are able to uh, uti utilize that to have uh, cheaper inputs uh, as far as coffee beans. Um, so you can see this is a very crowded space for Starbucks. And what we find when we come to is the, the space that is available or the opportunity we find is in, in differentiation and Starbucks focusing on selling their experience. Um, so that is why we've, we've recommended from a strategic change from cost to leadership to differentiation. Okay, like Gavin said, we want to focus on differentiation um, with Starbucks in India. Um, Starbucks is known for their experience all over the world. They need to capitalize this, capitalize on this, on this in the Indian market as well. Um, they can do this through more training of their baristas, just giving them uh, the same kind of training they give them in the U.S. and Japan and China, give them more of the personal touch. Um, and then focusing on the experience, making their stores more luxurious, making the ambience something that ties in with the Indian culture where they want to come and be able to socialize for hours. Um, the other thing is making product lines that are specific to the Indian culture. So focusing on tea products maybe. Um, it's not their niche in other places, but uh, working with Tata to maybe develop some tea products that will be specific for the culture. And then they've already developed a couple uh, product, coffee product lines uh, with the help of Tata uh, to focus more on the Indian culture. And then as far as resources, um, looking into revenue sharing, that's really something that CCB has done to achieve lower real estate costs. And what they do is uh, basically give a percentage of their profits as their rent. Uh, and that's re worked really well for CCB. Uh, because of that, they've been able to really saturate the market. Um, also leveraging their relationship with Tata, looking at Tata-owned properties uh, to maybe uh, build uh, Starbucks stores on those locations. Also, Starbucks known for um, giving their employees ownership, which will help um, with their engagement and offering that experience that they're well known for. And then kind of looking at how the Quarters Five Forces model ties into the Diamond D, um, we think by offering the differentiation strategy and focusing on the resources, we can fix some of these links that are broken um, and allow them to um, be consistent with their management preferences and their organizational structure. Um, also, by focusing on a differentiation strategy, they are able to address the high threat of industry comp competition because they'll be pulling away from their competitors. Um, they'll also be offering products that are very consistent with what the Indian culture preferences, which will help um, lower the threat of substitutes. Um, as far as their resources, um, entering into these sharing, uh, revenue sharing agreements, uh, capitalizing on their relationship with Tata, giving their employees ownership, all that is going to increase the barriers to entry along with their uh, differentiation strategy to um, also make that threat lower, that medium risk threat of potential entrance. Um, with that, Ruben's gonna talk a little bit more about our implementation. Thank you, Rachel. As our analysis has demonstrated, the strategy adopted by Tata Starbucks has not been successful. We understand that the main reason is they went to a co-leadership strategy that is not sustainable in a, in, a, in, a, in a culture like India. Our recommendation is to go back, or as, we, as my colleagues have mentioned, into a differentiation strategy. To deliver that strategy, we will focus on the top cities in India within high-end locations such as malls, universities, and airports. We also like to recommend leveraging the, uh, the footprint that Tata has in that city in, or in that country. The Indians are very, uh, I work for a company, I work for TCS, which is a company part of Tata, and what I've learned when I mentioned that to people from India, they're very impressed. Uh, 
that has a, a, a great reputation. They're very proud of that, that national so successful company. So we want to um, take advantage of that and work close with Tata and put established locations such as in the hotels Tata that Tata owns. And we're going to establish, uh, establish locations in those areas. They also have locations in all of these cities. We like to leverage those, that, that, uh, that fame, that reputation that they have and target that high-end market in high-end places, close to university with high traffic and focus. And that's going to be a way to get back, scale back, and focus on a differentiation strategy. Um, with that, I would like to open to questions. Do you have any questions for us?